When I was little, I thought I was going to grow up to be a princess, or maybe a ballerina, but definitely something girly. Eventually, my princess plans would give way to more realistic dreams of going to law school and changing the world. But fixing cars definitely didn't fit into my plan anywhere there. In fact, people probably would have laughed at that suggestion. So what happened? Somehow along the way, I happily ended up a master auto mechanic. I own an auto repair shop here in Phoenix. <laughs> and I teach basic car care classes for women. It all started with a childhood obsession with the game Punch Buggy. You guys remember that? I loved them. They were shiny and colorful and bright and each so different, and I wanted one. And so after years of saving all of my pennies at 16, I finally bought my very own. And it was a hunk of junk. And so like Volkswagens do, soon after, it broke down. <laughs> and here I was, this little person, and the process of getting it repaired and back up on the road left me feeling vulnerable and out of control. And so I started reading Volkswagen magazines to learn a little bit more about them so I could feel back in control. <laughs> That's where I got introduced to women of the automotive industry. <laughs> this was clearly a man's world and I was not welcome. The only time women showed up, they were in high heels and bikinis and strategically placed grease marks draped over the hood of a car for men's viewing pleasure. I took this as a challenge. My parents were hippies after all. They raised me to question the status quo. So by the time I got my bug, I was a proud and stubborn feminist. And this was something I could really sink my teeth into. The more people told me that fixing cars was something that I couldn't or shouldn't do, the more I dug my heels in and said, watch me. I wasn't learning about cars because I actually cared about cars. <laughs> I was learning about cars because I had a point to prove. I was on a mission to prove to the world and really to prove to myself that this was something that I could do, something that women could do. So I enrolled in high school auto shop. I found some mentors who were willing to teach me even though I was just a girl. And together we re rebuilt my entire Volkswagen. In the end, I got a whole lot more than I expected. Not only did I get my shiny, newly restored punch buggy, but I didn't yet know then that after college I was going to realize that I actually missed fixing cars. I was going to move out to Arizona, go to tech school, and make a career out of it. But the most important thing was that the lessons I learned along my twisted path eventually would become my life's passion to pass on, to empower others, particularly women, through the knowledge of basic automotive knowledge. So I'm going to share with you guys a couple of the things that I learned along the way. The first most important thing that I learned as a result of this whole process is to lose your fear, or at least learn to act in spite of it. When I first started out on this journey, I didn't know anything about cars. They were big and scary and unknown and complicated, and they frightened me, like they do a lot of us. But once I started learning a couple of the basics of this big piece of metal and plastic and rubber that is our cars, Breaking it down into systems and finding ways that I could relate it to other things that I did know and that I wasn't afraid of, that fear started melting away. Maybe it wasn't so frightening after all. Somebody put it together, which meant that maybe I could take it apart and put it back together again. Next was to find my strength. I was in a man's world, so I couldn't always do things the way that men did because my strength was different. It's down here instead of here. We would often stop and stare and look at me, why is she doing it like that? But what I learned was that there's a solution or multiple solutions to every problem. If you can't lift a tire with your arms, roll it up your leg. You've got a built-in ramp there. So <laughs> even though it doesn't always look the way everybody else is doing it, doesn't mean it's wrong, as long as you get to the same end result and as long as it works for you. So once you find your strength and you lose your fear, what I was left with was confidence. Confidence to do just about anything. That's where I went from being able to fix my car to being a great mechanic. I could tackle anything even if I'd never seen it before. And that spilled over into the rest of my life. I could get up on my roof and fix a loose shingle. I could fix a leaky faucet or build a new porch. Or on a bigger scale, pack my shiny punch buggy up and move cross country. Or start a new business with only a few dollars to my name. Now, I'm not saying that I do everything myself, nor do I expect you to. There is definitely a time and a place to call on the professionals. But what matters is that when you do, it doesn't have to be a vulnerable experience. It leaves you feeling not in control. I had a student call me a few weeks after she took my car care class. She'd gotten a flat tire, and she was so excited to tell me. When I asked what she did, she said, oh, I was wearing heels, so I called AAA. <laughs> <laughs> but what matters is what she said next. She said, I watched him, and he did it right. She felt in control of the situation. It doesn't matter if she never changes a tire again in the rest of her life. What matters is that she knows that she could if she needed to, and that she felt in control. So learning about cars isn't really about learning about cars. 
It's about regaining some control and making life maybe not so scary. So I encourage you all to learn how to change a tire, do something that scares you. You might just surprise yourself with how much you already know and just how much you're capable of. Knowledge is power, guys. Use it. Thank you. Yeah.